Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Tuesday, April 26, 2022, and I'm Laser Haas, coming to you with an update on situations concerning uh, Bain Capital, Romney, Goldman Sachs, and their lawyers, m and and Paul Roy Traub's uh, defrauding e-toys, Mattel destroying the entire toys industry, Finger Hut, Polaroid, and uh, GameStop, all uh, intertwined with each other. Uh, first of all, let's start off with the proper question. Could Al Capone retroactively retire from his organized crimes? Of course he couldn't. But Mitt Romney's campaign claims that that's what he did when he lied about when he left Bain Capital because he signed his presidential campaign 2011 Office of Government Ethics OGE Form 278 on his campaign finance. He went through with the genius of some lawyer or team of lawyers, uh, Romney being, you know, uh, 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 JD graduated himself. Oh, let me take these glasses off. I'm seeing three of me. I know it don't look any better. Sorry about that. The, the point being is that in 2011, when he filed his campaign presidential finance forms, under penalty of perjury, they went through the thing of saying that Mitt Romney had nothing to do with Bain Capital in any way whatsoever since February 11, 1999. The reason why that's significant is because between 1999, after February 11, 1999, and August 2nd, 2001, where that's when Romney got caught with paperwork and claimed he was retroactively, or his campaign did, by the way. He's not totally confessed. He put in the penalty of perjury paperwork, and his campaign is the one that said he retroactively retired. <clears throat> so it's not an outright confession by Mitt Romney. The facts convict, but he's not confessed yet. It's not his statement. It's his team statement. But be that as it may, the team claims that he retroactively retired because it's obviously that he either lied on his SEC forms or he lied on his presidential campaign forms that he had nothing to do with Bain Capital in any way whatsoever. Uh, and that's due to Combe Connolly. Combe Connolly was a partner of m and Morris Nichols Arsenal Law Firm, which was a Bain Capital Goldman Sachs law firm in Delaware, which was also eToys law firm, which was also a law firm for Bain Capital in the KB case, and a law firm for m and was a law firm for Goldman Sachs, while Paul Roy Traub was the creditor's attorney in eToys, uh, and the creditor's committee attorney for Mattel, without disclosing that Paul Roy Traub worked under Barry Gold, who worked under Michael Glazier, under Mitt Romney Bain Capital owning stage stores. Michael Glazier was both the CEO of KB Toys and the CEO of Stage Doors when it went bankruptcy, a director there back in 2000, 2001. The point being, laws like Sarbanes-Oxley since 2002, I think that's when it came into existence, forbids executives going from one company to another causing bankruptcies. And that's the very reason why the entire toy industry has been destroyed by the racketeering enterprise at Goldman Sachs, Bain Capital, m and uh, Paul Roy Traub, and Combe Connolly. Combe Connolly being a partner of m and who was assistant U.S. attorney from 1992 until 1999 after clerking for Walter K. Stapleton, a Third Circuit judge who just so happens to be a partner of m and And the four lawyers now turn judges, the only four judges, federal judges in the state of Delaware, unless they pull somebody in from the outside, is Combe Connolly, Chief Judge, Mary Ellen Slights, uh, no, Mary Ellen Norica, is uh, uh, a former m and partner who Trump made Mary Ellen and Combe Connolly judges. And then Andrews and Stark uh, are the other two judges who just so happen to be assistant U.S. attorneys under Combe Connolly, uh, burying the cases of E-Toys, Bain Capital, m and And it's all conflict of interest, and none of them can be involved in GameStop. But Combe Connolly is the judge over GameStop. And that's uh, apropos because Mitt Romney came from uh, Boston Consulting Group before he went to Bain & Company and then became Bain Capital. 
and Mitt Romney was involved in Neostar, which came from Babbage's and became GameStock. And Paul Roy Traub was involved in Neostar too. Paul Roy Traub gets involved in so many things, it's unfathomable. Enron, Adelphia, Kmart, uh, Polaroid, Finger Hut, E-Toys, FEO Schwartz, uh, KB Toys, Cosmetic Plus, Playco, on and on and on. Wherever there's a fraud going on, Mark Dreyer, Ed O'Coon, Tom Petters Ponzi, Paul Traub's involved. He's the bag man. They call him the brown bag king of New York. He's the one that knows where all the bribes are handed in cash or how they're arranged. He's had many meetings in Aruba because we don't have an extradite treaty down there. He even met with my lawyers down there. And anyway, uh, they're all partners in crime. M&AT merged a learning company for Goldman Sachs and Bain Capital with Mattel that ripped them off of $4 billion in 1999. And then M&AT was my lawyer and Etoy's lawyer while being Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs lawyer. The significance being is that M&AT was a court approved by the court after stating under penalty of perjury it had nothing to do with anybody, Mattel, Bain Capital, Goldman Sachs. And then M&AT forged my resignation paper when they couldn't bribe me like they did my counterpart, Michael Glazier. Michael Glazier was running KB Toys as CEO, paid himself $18 million dollars paid Bain Capital $83 million before he filed bankruptcy of KB. Now, the person representing Bain Capital on the $83 million fraudulent conveyance, none other than M&AT. M&AT is represented E-Toys and me against Bain Capital while he's representing Bain Capital in the KB Toys case. And guess who prosecuted the case? Couldn't be Cone Connolly, that without him. So what they did is Paul Traub asked to be the one to prosecute the fraudulent conveyance of uh, Bain Capital, $83 million, and Michael Glazier bribery of $18 million. See, they knew I had him caught, and I put affidavits in the record there. So the Department of Justice, again, under Cone Connolly, he was the U.S. Attorney from August 2, 2001, until 2009 when he resigned, after... Senator Biden and Bo Biden stopped him from becoming a judge in Delaware. And Bo Biden and, and Senator Biden couldn't be involved in the case. It would be obstruction. It was a federal case. A senator can't be involved. And Bo Biden is the attorney general in Delaware, who's actually Joseph Bowden Biden III. Uh, Bo Biden couldn't be involved. He was the attorney general in Delaware from 2007 until 2015. Now, they said they'd help me take care of it if the feds ever dropped the case. So the case closed in 2015. Bo Biden died. And he's not the only one. There's a dozen other dead in the case. And that's a different story. In the meantime, what you keep seeing is the same guys involved in KB, Zany Brainy, FAO Schwartz, Jim Barry, Stage Stores, Jumbo Sports, Toys R Us, E-Toys, Parent Company, PM Bay Kids, Babies R Us. All those companies was a monopoly. That the antitrust division, SEC, DOJ, FBI, nobody touched. And then they were bled out, bankrupt, and destroyed by the same gang. Again, nobody's touching. Hundreds of crimes, and I can document them without a single need of any discovery. The only reason we need more discovery is 211 crimes is not enough. We need to find 312. We can find them if somebody else can go into the files, but they're making the records disappear because they know that's how I found them. In 2001... The evidence went online on the court system, PACER, Public Access to Court Electronic Records. So PACER locked me out, because that's where I'm finding all the evidence. But if you go into PACER, Westlaw, LexisNexis, you'll see that E-Toys, KB Toys, Stage Stores, Playco, anything with Paul Traub's name on it practically, there's a couple that slipped through the cracks, but most of them, they say not available, not found in database, records not found, Right? I, I mean, that's a smoking gun on its own, right? The feds are not allowed to delete, the, the delete federal court records. And when you call them, they say it's too costly to handle. Please. What a bunch of crap. It's just like saying Romney was uh, retroactively retired during the two years that Cone Connolly was a partner of MNAT. So he left being the assistant U.S. attorney that didn't prosecute the Mattel uh, $4 billion fraud case and the E-Toys $1 billion stock fraud case where E-Toys stock went to $85, but Goldman Sachs gave us less than eighteen fifty. dollars right? They kept the money in between by doing a kickback scheme, by severely underpricing and under-allocating, 
they gave it to hand-picked friends. So instead of making $1.50 per share, they made five, 10, 15, 20 dollars per share, 50% kickback of whatever the people did. And you can see that in New York Times rigging the IPO game, 2013. After the Supreme Court of Appeals said that our case could reopen, and I hired Barry Gold at the suggestion of MNAT and Paul Traub saying they would agree with him because they saw him in home life, which was a Sears thing. And again, that's gone too. They're involved in that. Uh, and by the way, Paul Traub was the uh, shareholders attorney in the Kmart bankruptcy in Michigan, which is where the Romneys are from. Remember, he, he was governor there. And Scott Romney, Mitt Romney's silent brother, but always involved in a lot of bullshit is still there in Michigan where the family is royalty and can get away. They know where they can do all the bull crap there. You know, like one million people signing a thing to stop the city manager bull crap. And they said, no, that wasn't valid because the paper was one millimeter too dark or too light or too thick or whatever the heck it was. Or the font was not dark enough. Just a lot of babbling bullshit to get away with their crimes. Just like the hounds, shills, trolls, whatever you call them. They're saying, I'm too fat, I'm too old, I didn't graduate from Harvard. There's no requisite that a CEO of a company or a court-appointed fiduciary graduate from Harvard, right? There's plenty of illiterate guys out there that are CEOs, uh, hundreds of millions and billionaires uh, in control of thousands of employees like I was. We hire people to do that stuff for us. That's what we do. Just like Steve Jobs, he conducted the orchestra. That's what I did. I stopped the stealing, came in. I actually had eToys merged with Scholastic. I did not know that my counsel, MNAT and Greg Werkheiser, who was also eToys counsel, and Paul Roy Traub, the creditor's counsel, and Barry Gold, that they talked me into hiring to sue Goldman Sachs. In other words, MNAT, Goldman Sachs attorney, told me to hire a person to help sue Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs was suing Goldman Sachs and laughing at us all the way to the bank they would never get clobbered in. They were guaranteeing the sex of their crimes. And when they tried to bribe me and it didn't work, that's when they snuck in Combe Connolly back into the U.S. Attorney's Office in Delaware who kept telling me there was no crimes. But I didn't find out until 2007 with the proof that I got from the Bidens that Combe Connolly was a partner of MNAT. So I'm handing Frank Nitty seven years of evidence asking him to arrest and indict Al Capone, and they're laughing all the way to the bank. It's a wonder they couldn't crack up while they're talking to me on the phone. A former partner, Stephen Maka, God rest his soul, did. He used to be with Traub, Boniquist, and, and Yellen, but they couldn't tolerate the stuff that Traub was going to do. They thought they'd wind up arrested, so they left. They knew that Traub was the brown bag king in New York, and they didn't want no part of it. You know, uh, and when I told Maker what was going on and asked him if he could just uh, how he could help me, he cracked up so much on the phone he couldn't stop laughing. So I called him back the next day and he cracked up again. And I had to call him back a couple hours later. He said, so let me get this right. Paul Traub actually got you to hire Barry Gold, his 20-year partner, uh, uh, to be the one to help you guys sue Goldman Sachs. They've been partners for 20 years. Right. I didn't know that when he gave me the details of it and and the Department of Justice, Mark Kenny, the trial attorney, turned around and said, we handled the Paul Traub, Barry Gold stuff and bonus sales. What they didn't know about was is that I was searching on Pacer that was now online so they couldn't control what was accessed only through the clerks. It was now online starting uh, middle 2001 and they weren't aware of that. So, uh, you know, when talking to Aaron Swartz, I learned to download everything that they could make court records disappear. That's what his court case was about. He was downloading at MIT all court docket records and super fast action. And they needed to stop him for very cases just like this that the information they didn't want out there. He was paying for him. It wasn't like he was cheating. He was paying for it. Right. Uh, and they tried to get him for computer fraud. And when they tried to make him do a probation deal. For six months, he said no, and they said he wound up dead the next day, killing himself. What a crock of shit. There's a dozen people dead in my case other than him. A brother of a U.S. attorney, uh, uh, the Madoffs, uh, Robert Albert, the E-Toy shareholder, Michael Sazoff, the guy that tried to kill him that Robert had to shoot, uh, uh, Marty Lackner, the brother of a U.S. attorney involved in the Tom Petters Ponzi that Paul Traub controlled, Right? Tom Petters and a dozen people go to jail for over 100 years. Petters get 50 years. Paul Traub that controlled them didn't get one day. 
and that was after he confessed to lying under oath in Etoys and being partners with Mark Dreyer, who also got 20 years. Because when I made Trial Bonnequist and Fox shut down, when we proved that the Secretary of State of New York had revoked their status, that mean every case that he testified he was in good standing in was invalid. So they shut down right away and merged with Mark Dreyer, and he made him a crook so bad, within two years' time, Mark Dreyer wound up in jail trying to impersonate a guy and get a $50 million check because they were running out of steam. Obama was coming in, Bush guys were going out, and they didn't know what the new brother was going to do. Anyway, back full circle. So we got Goldman Sachs and Bain Capital, our partners in a racketeering enterprise. We got Mitt Romney that brags that he made his hundreds of millions of dollars, and it's way more than that, folks. Nobody's looked into saying Katie. The only guy brave enough to ask him the questions about it was Tim Russert. In 2007, he blindsided Romney about it. And the next thing you know, six months later, he's dead. Right? Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, uh, Villegas. Uh, uh, um, uh, Jay Casero. I helped uh, the Casero brothers... Uh, when a Quee Tan case, I ran the websites for them so that they would be safe against Romney Sodexo, S-O-D-E-X-O, and they won the Quee Tan case. Now, kids win millions of dollars, and then they said that Jay went in and was going to stab his uh, doctor, so a security guard just happened to have a gun in the office, shot and killed Jay, right? You know, and John went dark. I don't hear anything from him anymore, and they damn sure didn't reward me from their Quee Tan case which I want to take now anyway, because uh, you never know where the money's coming from. They try all types of things. They try to settle with me and get me to sign an NDA. I may as well take the bribe back 20 years ago, suffer for uh, 21 years, and now they want to give me money if I sign an NDA and get it, let them get away with it. You know, I, I, I'm never. I'm never giving up. I'm never surrendering. Justice is defined as, yes, I'm entitled to money, and I'm entitled to get the victims back money that they stole. And that's easy to do once justice starts. There's no stopping it, unless they rig the case again with another crony corrupt. Colm Connolly was a Goldman Sachs, Bain Capital partner after he refused to indict Goldman Sachs and Bain Capital. And he was a partner with m &AT. Every dollar he made was part of the crimes of stealing from me and E-Toys and Mattel and FAO Schwartz and KB Toys. And then Cone Connolly went back as the United States Attorney from 2001 to 2009, bearing the case, never disclosing his ties to m &AT. But he had a helper. His helper was when I authorized the suing as head of E-Toys, Goldman Sachs in New York Supreme Court case uh, 601-805-2002, look up New York Times rigging the IPO game, right? Uh, Sullivan and Cromwell was their attorney. Well, Stephen Pikin was the Southern District of New York Assistant U.S. Attorney and the SEC Chief Task Force in the Southern District of New York that agreed with Cone Connolly that uh, Mattel and Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs did no wrong. But then he became a partner of Sullivan and Cromwell when I started proving the crimes in 2004. He left. And he stayed with Sullivan and Cromwell. And then Trump nominated Jay Clayton after he had that meeting with Romney, that big dinner meeting. It's all a sham, folks. They're acting like they hate each other. So if they fight each other in the 2024 election, uh, whoever you voting for, you're voting for the same guys. It's all a sham. Romney got Jay Clayton, who was a Goldman Sachs law firm partner whose wife was a Goldman Sachs partner in the very division merger and acquisitions for 20 years, a huge conflict of interest, and I sued Trump to block him. The clerk refused to put my lawsuit against Trump in the record for two months. They waited until three weeks after Jay Clayton was confirmed. And then Jay Clayton made Stephen Pikin, the SEC uh, task force guy, the Southern District of New York assistant U.S. attorney, in charge of the SEC enforcement. So they blocked me for the entire four years they were in office. It wasn't until Gary Gensler got in office that I got the two SEC whistleblower case numbers finally. And then SWAT showed up at my door, and that's how I met Reddit Apes. They welcomed me in, offered me homes, offered me money, offered to be security, you know, because SWAT put machine guns in my face and tried to scare me off. And I told them, no, I'm not backing down. They can shoot you, they can kill you, but they can't make you give up who you are. People can say that they don't believe me. That doesn't change what I'm living. That's just bullshit to stop you looking. Everybody that claims to be an ape, 
that claims to own GameStop stock, ask them to prove their shares, and then explain the insanity of them wanting a crooked, crony, corrupt federal judge, corrupt federal prosecutor turned chief judge, and the other three judges, all his partners. Out of 50,000 lawyers and legal professionals in Delaware, the only four they can find are all partners? It's absurd. This is a shit that goes on and on, over and over. Right? It's organized crime. It's martners, uh, uh, mobsters. It's racketeering. But the Ninth Circuit said all this stuff is insubstantial. I got confessions. It's insubstantial. Dead people. A brother of a U.S. attorney dead. The Wall Street Journal, who happens to have the same office as Bain Capital's law firm, or Ropens and Gray, said that this is not a case. That the brother of a U.S. attorney, Marty Lackner, being involved in the Ponzi scheme, Tom Petter's Ponzi, that Paul Traub controlled, and Bain Capital and Goldman Sachs are involved in in Fingerhut, they seized Polaroid, sold it back to Paul Traub. They sold it to him for $83 uh, million with Gordon Brothers. And then Paul Traub became, after leaving Palm Petter's Ponzi and not getting arrested, a partner of Golden Brothers, and he announced a $2 billion deal that nobody knew about during the auction process. Because the judge shut it off and gave it to the second highest bidder. Other people, uh, Richie Capital Management and Lynn Tilton, wanted to bid on Porporoy. The judge said no. He was stopping the bidding. You ever hear such bullshit? And then you see the judge walking hand in hand with Doug Kelly, the receiver of Tom Petter's Ponzi. Now, Doug Kelly was Tom Petter's lawyer. When they go to seize Polaroid by federal order... Doug Kelly quits Tom Petters, just him, not his partner. Kelly Walter kept uh, uh, being with Tom Petters, and I don't know if they ever got uh, new attorneys for Tom Petters or not, because I can't see the records. Pacers has locked me out. And they turn around, and Doug Kelly becomes the prosecutor of Tom Petters Ponzi as a receiver. Nitty becomes the prosecutor of Capone right there in your face. And nobody says nothing about it. Right now, Tom Petter's Ponzi, I got him to finally confess, was over 40 billion. They got Larry Reynolds confessed 12 billion, uh, Mike Catane 10 billion, Palm Beach Lean Capital billions of dollars, uh, Sky Bell Lancelite billions of dollars. But they lie and said it's only 3.7 billion. The reason they said it's only 3.7 billion is Marty Lackner was partners of a couple of billion dollars in the feeder funds of Tom Petter's Ponzi. And guess who Marty Lackner's brother is? James Lackner, that is assistant, United States Attorney, Minnesota, head of the criminal division that for five years told me at PettersFraud.com there was no case. They didn't arrest him until Bush was leaving and they didn't know what was going to happen. They had to clean it up before the new boys got in. So they arrested Tom Petters in September. They arrested Mark Dreyer in December. And when Business Week, Matthew Goldstein was going to do the story on that, because we already had Paul Traub in the Wall Street Journal admitted, admitted, right, that he lied intentionally under oath. In the Wall Street Journal, uh, eToys, investors find conflict at law firms. That was me running eToys. Uh, they can't even spell my name right, or they juxtapose the way that, you know, I have everybody address me. But besides the point, the point is, is that Marty Lackner, involved in the Petters Ponzi, feeder fund to Petters Ponzi, that's controlled by Paul Traub, who winds up with Polaroid, but finger hut that Paul Traub had at 6555 Third Avenue, New York, New York, where uh, it was bought with Tom Petters Ponzi money, but Paul Traub had the home office at his office in New York, gets Goldman Sachs and Bain Capital to bail them out with a $50 million loan right before Tom Petters Ponzi gets arrested. And the Fed's never seen Finger Hut. And then they take it pe uh, public. And guess what? They went bankrupt too again. Right? Matter of fact, KB Toys and E-Toys were bankrupt three times each. Because when you know you can't be prosecuted, you steal bigger, faster from as many as you can. And stealing in the toy industry, billions of dollars, Toys R Us, KB Toys, Zany Brainy, FAO Schwartz, all those things. When you can stiff the creditors, landlords, shareholders, retirement funds, all that stuff. You bleed out before the bankruptcy. You bleed out with your lawyers during the bankruptcy. You make sure nobody else can bid against you so you get it back again, just like in Toys R Us. A guy bid a, almost a billion dollars for 300 stores. They said it wasn't enough. I guarantee you they didn't get back $100 million net for those 300 stores. 
but they couldn't allow somebody else to buy Toys R Us and get the books and records. That's the thing about going bankrupt. And eToys, they destroyed the books and records the first month of a 14-year-old case, saying it was too expensive to hold on to it. We had two one million square foot warehouses. It was on computer drives that doesn't fit half a pallet. But they never showed me that order. By the way, to get all the employees I was fired angry at me, they actually got the court to give a court order during bankruptcy to double the salary of all the employees. So they hated me when I fired them, right? Of course, right? You, uh, and then the three key uh, employees, uh, 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 Denise Arda, Lisa Turco, they're all in there switching ID numbers on stuff every time I'm trying to do something and with the assets, the lease, the fixed furniture, fixture, and equipments, and the the hundreds of millions of dollars of uh, toys that they made the warehouse management system disappear. They sold stuff uh, to people uh, during the bankruptcy and didn't tell anybody about it. When I found a $15,000 check from Liquidation World and asked them to give me the details, they wiped the drive. They wiped the detailed facts of how much each item cost and how much it was sold for. Pioneer Distributing, right? They would buy 10,000 uh, items at full price of something from Pioneer Distributing and then sell it back to Pioneer Distributing at 90% off six months later. That wasn't addressed in the bankruptcy. Wells Fargo loaned eToys $40 million. It's a John Galeen case, and this is very important, people. John Galeen, Goldman Sachs people, loaned Bucyrus a bankruptcy in 1994, prior to the bankruptcy, they loaned $35 million. Galeen's firm of Millbank and Tweed represented the people that loaned the money, the $35 million. The reason why that's significant is because they take out exorbitant fees, $5 million, $10 million, $20 million in 30, 60 days as profit, and they didn't tell the court about it. Well, Bucyrus got sold to Jackson National Life Insurance Company, and they said, hey, we want the money that you guys took from the illegal loan because you didn't disclose it. <coughs> John Galeen lied twice, and he went to jail for a year, and the law firm had to give back all the millions of dollars that they got paid. When they refused to do it at first, the judge said, okay, I'll just pull John Galeen out of jail, and I'll turn around and ask him to testify what really went on. They immediately paid the money. John Galeen told the Wisconsin judge, your Honor, this is the way we do it in New York and Delaware. And the judge in Wisconsin said, well, we go by the law here, right? Perjury is a serious crime. John Galeen went to jail and they had to cough up the money. But if you go to Lopucky.com, L-O-P-U-C-K-I, Professor Lopucky.com wrote a book called Courting Failure, How Competition for Big Bankruptcy cor uh, Cases Are Corrupting Our Court. And Senator John Corden actually turned around and said in 2005, that picking a venue to stick your bankruptcy case is like picking a verdict. And United States Attorney General John Ashcroft wrote a letter to the Hague Global Forum on Corruption that bankruptcy court corruption, corrupt federal judges colluding with high-ranking members in the, the uh, DOJ, was the number one problem. That cases are unreasonably kept open for years, e toys 14 years, right? And that the whistleblowers are intentionally ostracized, threatened, and coerced an American system of justice, American citizens have nowhere to turn. And that's where I'm at. The Third Circuit actually said that the federal rules of appellate procedure don't apply to our case. It's a joke. And again, this is the, the case where, you know, Walter K. Stapleton is a senior judge. And even though he's a senior judge in the Philadelphia court, his office is actually in Wilmington, Delaware. The same building where the U.S. trustee system is that polices the bankruptcy courts, and they kept turning around and saying that I had no case. The trustee said, it's not a bribe. You don't understand it. Bring it to me, and I'll sign off about it. Nice try, right? I wasn't that stupid. He also said he did the lapse lingue, the slip of the tongue, that said to me, we took care of the Paul Trawberry Gold things in bonus sales. He didn't know that I was talking to competitors and enemy of Traub looking for a way to turn around and get this straight. And they were telling me, look at bonus, look at bonus. I thought it was a bonus paycheck, a bonus commission. I didn't know it was bonus sales until that slip of the tongue. And that's where I found the first smoking gun, where in bonus sales, and home life, by the way, Paul Traub and Barry Gold had made me, with MNAT, be collateral logistics and e-toy. So instead of being the CEO, in technical terms, where we had to file new SEC paperwork 
under the guise it would save millions of dollars in filing 10 Qs and 10 Rs and all that stuff, that if I just got my company hired and hired Barry Gold as president under me, we could save the estate money and, and they could make a settlement with Goldman Sachs on the stock fraud. So I said yes, not knowing that Barry Gold was Paul Traub's partner, paid for by Paul Traub's law firm, that Barry Gold and Paul Traub worked under Michael Glazier and Bain Capital at stage stores, so they all come over to e Toys and pretend that they're not uh, knowing each other, lies under the court, fraud on the court, and Cone Connolly Cars being a partner of those crimes as a federal prosecutor, bearing the case from investigation and prosecution. A failing first-year law student can make a career out of the evidence I got in this case, but nobody will let it into court. They put Don Zeiger in jail, took him to court, but they won't let me in court. The judge in Etoys ordered the clerk never to allow me. And the clerk, by the way, is David Beard, been there for more than two decades. Right? It's ridiculous what's going on. Delaware is the number one bankruptcy court. Almost as many bankruptcy, big business bankruptcies as New York. They're the two biggest ones in the country. California, Texas, everybody brings most of the major uh, bankruptcy fraud cases there. Because they can control it with the Delaware Court of Chancery, which, by the way, Combe Connolly's assistant U.S. attorney that's still there at the DOJ in Wilmington, Delaware, is Ellen Slight. She had the FBI threaten me that if I didn't take down my websites when they were renominating Combe to be a uh, judge in Delaware, that they put me in jail because I have a felony record. That's damn 45 years ago. I told them to go F themselves, right? Bring the gun and point it in my face. I don't like saying it to people over the phone. Come to me. I'll tell you right to your face. You're working for the dark side. I got no respect to you. You're damn right I'm vexatious litigator because we have the right to vex organized criminals that have infiltrated our federal system of justice with crony corrupts. It needs to be stopped. It's absurd. It's not about me. It's what they're doing to us. Ellen Slight's husband is the chancery court. All four federal judges are Cone Connolly partners, so it doesn't matter which one you switch it to, even if you get them to recuse. And how do we know that the one that comes in is not another Bain Capital, Goldman Sachs, uh, BCG uh, guy like Bezos? You know, I didn't know Bezos or Michael Milken friend. You know, if you look at Green Debt, I'm the sort of uh, source of Matt Tyabby's story, Green Debt. I'm the whistleblower in stage stores and in KB Toys. You can look it up in the records, right? Uh, even though he didn't mention me. I've got the emails to prove it. He'll never deny it. He knows better. And, and I got respect for Tab. Uh, he's got kids, and I understand he doesn't do it. The only time I give him shit, and David's the order, again, they got families. they got to protect. There's dead people in my case. That's fine. You don't want to ride it. You don't have protection as independents. But don't go out in public and pick on other people for not doing the story. And the real asshole I pick on is Jesse Isinger. He wrote that book, Chicken Shit Club. Right When I called him out on it, not talking about my story, because Paul Steiger, the guy that created ProPublica, did my first story as the head editor of the Wall Street Journal. And I talked to him before he picked the journalist one when he was forming ProPublica. And Paul Steiger chickened out and never had anybody talking to me. They're all chicken sits. They're all funded by American Heritage and stuff like that, and they protect all the Republicans to do organized crimes. This is one of the biggest Wall Street fraud stories ever, bar the mortgage crisis. And the evidence is so easy, you have to jump off a cliff to miss it. But nobody will touch one thing about it. Ask yourself why. How these hundreds of crimes and all these connections and crony corruption are getting away with it. And people argue that I'm fat, I'm old, I don't write right, I don't do commas right. Guess what? Victims are not required by law to have a PhD in English, a summa cum laude in law, and to write like Mark Twain or Steinbeck. That's other people's jobs. But they stole all my money. I can't hire anybody to do it. Here's the thing. I had lawyers every every time from 2001 after I fired MAT to all the way to mid-2005 when they had the hearing on my case. You can read the transcript of it. My lawyer said, you know what, Your Honor? I forgot to put in my pro hack VJ. And the judge said, well, you can't talk. Now, when Paul Traub's lawyer did that, the judge says, okay, you're fine. Get it in real right away. But the judge, the visiting judge, who retired after he did the order to dismiss me, said that I didn't file my paperwork. Well, the order said that m and to file my paperwork. So they're finding fault with the guys that are doing the crime that confess lies under oath, the ones that have the conflict of interest, and who, by the way, to this very day, have concealed the Mattel and Bain Capital things, where they reduced the prices 
that I sold, the tens of millions of dollars that I sold eToys to Bain Capital KB for, they reduced those prices after they locked me out and stuck Barry Gold in. Toby Link was the CEO founder. He left when I came in. In April 2001, when the judge's order went into effect, I was nunk pro tunk back to March 7, uh, 2001. And I was there until m and forged my paperwork that they said is the resignation paper, and the two pages don't even say that. It says settlement on $80,000 of expenses. And they didn't put Barry Gold into president or CEO until November 2002. So who was running it in between times? There was two vice presidents, David Gatto and David Haddad. David Gatto ties to Bain Capital. And David Haddad was a former to Mattel guy who tried to hide $2 million overseas. And I caught him on it. Hiding money in a bankruptcy is automatic jail time. Now this guy is with Marvel Entertainment and all that other stuff. Those people are idiots. That guy's a rogue from day one. Uh, when he read in the HBO film thing right after he left e the, the uh, It's a travesty of justice that that guy's not in jail. Paul Traub, m and Goldman Sachs, Bain Capital, Mitt Romney himself belongs in jail. When I sued him for racketeering in Los Angeles, we didn't get into court. The lawyers lied again and said that I was settled. And Romney said if I don't take his name and Bain Capital and Michael Glazer's off my case, his lawyer said... Uh, um, Rocky Stai, T-S-A-I, said if I don't take their names off the case, they're going to make sure it gets dropped. The arrogance of these people, in an email. My own attorney emailed me a threat to back off, Henry Hyman, one of the attorneys I had in 2004. Emailed me a threat to back off and said that if I didn't, that Paul Traub was going to make sure I didn't get paid in E-Toys, which I didn't was going to make sure that they destroy my career, which they did, and worse would happen. The next thing that happens when my lawyer, Henry Hyman, reproves to put in the smoking gun that I found, that Paul Traub and Barry Gold were partners in home life and in uh, bonus stores, I found the affidavit that proved that they were lying in e-toys, that my daughter got kidnapped. And one of the places I was sharing my information with was at Bankruptcy Shoe Liquidators. Larry Reynolds was a partner of Bankruptcy Shoe Liquidators. Larry Reynolds was also a partner of Paul Traub, Bain Capital, Goldman Sachs, at Tom Petters Ponzi. He laundered $12 billion for that, and he finally did 10 years in jail. And he gets out of jail, and he immediately tries to taunt me. I can't take care of my kids. With a broken arm, I tried to go after him, and he ran off and left word where he'd be at Hollywood Park. People wind up dead over there in construction zones where they could throw me under the stadium. I wised up and calmed down my anger and didn't go after him. Because he is a 77 or 80 year old man after he did his time. You're not going to stand in front of me and brag about kidnapping my daughter and get away with it. Right? You're just not going to do that. You know. The, the thing is, they do the crimes. People are dead. It, it would be sacrilegious and cowardice of me for me to stop. I'm in this until death do our part or justice comes. It doesn't have to be what I want justice to be. But it has to be that they are found guilty because Goldman Sachs claims that Malaysia 1MDB was a single aberrant act of behavior. And we now know that was bullshit. That Goldman Sachs and Bain Capital have been doing organized crimes, obstruction of justice, infiltration of a Department of Justice. What happened over in Malaysia was they had the same plan, but then the regime changed and they couldn't control the new guys. They went after them. And that $2.9 billion they say Goldman Sachs paid... Well, it was only $1.2 million, and we don't even know about that. The judge that ordered that to be paid uh, uh, a year ago, we haven't heard anything about it since then. Uh, the other part of the $2.9 billion was supposed to be what they uh, clawed back from other people. So that was all hogwash, too. Trump couldn't turn around and prosecute Romney for calling him a fraud and a charlatan because he'd also have to prosecute Goldman Sachs, and Goldman Sachs and Trump have business relationships together. Again, it's all a conflict of interest. Anybody in the public integrity section, the Office of Special Counsel, by the way, Scott uh, 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 Blotch that ran the Office of Special Counsel, uh, he destroyed his home computer records and his office computer records and confessed it. And he refused to do one day in jail. Right? Because he would have lost his bar license if he did the 30 days in jail that the judge wanted him to do. And I tried to reach out to him, said, you can make this right. Tell everybody the truth about it. He didn't. He dealt the card in. I got the email, right? 
Uh, he's where whistleblowers in the federal government go because technically I was an officer of the court. When you get approved by the court, you're an officer of the court. You're a trustee of the court, right? And N. Re Hazel Atlas Glass v. Hartford Emporer, U.S. Supreme Court, 1944, reopened the case, closed for nine years. When officers of the court, Cone Connolly, MNAT, Paul Traub, Barry Gold, Michael Glazer, do frauds on the court, there's no statute of limitations. There's people dead here, people. It needs to be an investigation. Right? A brother of U.S. attorney is dead. And his brother was the very U.S. attorney years over the Petters Ponzi that refused to do anything about it. It comes down to this. Can we let Al Capone retroactively retire from his organized crimes? Can we let organized crimes in Wall Street get away with infiltrating our Department of Justice? Can we get away with them intimidating courts and clerks so much that they refuse to let evidence in the case? Can we get away with judges ordering clerks that nobody can redress a grievance at a court? Can we let them get away with the Third Circuit Court uh, saying that the federal rules of appellate procedure, case 07-2360, that's what it says, that the federal rules of appellate procedure do not apply to the Etoys bankruptcy case? Can we let the Ninth Circuit turn around and say in an unsigned opinion that all this is insubstantial? Do you consider it insubstantial? Do you own Game Stock stock? Do you want Judge Cone Connolly to be on your case? Do you want a corrupt case system? Do you think that BCG sued Game Stop knowing that we had all this evidence only for a $30 million issue? Do you think that there's not a plan out there to somehow quash? Remember, Goldman Sachs is being in negotiations with Reddit to take Reddit public. With Goldman Sachs. What do you think is going to happen to all the information against Goldman Sachs on Reddit? The lawyers on Reddit already shut me down. I'm not allowed to ask questions in the legal part of that website. Right? And they have a whole bunch of people come out and attack anybody in private messages and on the threads, uh, on the postings on Reddit, uh, even in corruption. They won't let me post a theory thing in corruption. And I have more corruption things. Than, matter of fact, the Public Corruption Task Force in Los Angeles, Shake Up Royals Federal Prosecutor, 2008, L.A. Times, I posted after the Bidens gave me the resume of Cone Connolly, I posted a Public Corruption Task Force 18 U.S.C. 3057A time stamp complaint, December 7, 2007. And what I did is up top, I whited out only part of California so they could see it was an official form from California. And I had every page timestamp. The judge and clerk that helped me do that said that that will alert them that you know more than any pro se guy would know on his own. And the, the cause and effect of that was the public corruption task force was shut down and career federal prosecutors were threatened to keep their mouths shut. Is this the type of system of justice, the two-tier, above the law and, and not able to get justice through the law system that you want working in America? Do you not care about justice? Are we not for true justice in the American way or is all that bullshit? Ask yourself the question, do you care?